Hi guys, welcome back to another Hugh Jeffries video. In this video, I'm going to be restoring this trashed MacBook Pro which I purchased for $100 off Buy, Swap and Sell. It is by far the worst conditioned Mac I've ever seen. It has a large number of dents, scratches, and is even bent on the left side near the Ethernet port. The hinge also appears to be broken as the screen is completely loose. You can also see that there's quite a lot of dirt on both the inside and outside of this MacBook Pro. Whilst restoring this, I will also be customizing the Apple logo and backlit keyboard to a custom purple color. Before we get started, I'd like to thank iFixit for sponsoring this video. Get tools, parts, and guides at ifixit.com slash hughjeffries or at the link below. Right, let's get back into the video. Now, while this MacBook looks quite rough around the edges, I wasn't really sure what the inside of this MacBook looked like. So sure enough, removing the screws, I was able to get into the device and I was greeted with a lot of dirt. Now this was mainly because the two bottom feet had fallen off of this MacBook, which just allowed dust and dirt to enter into the device. No idea how long this has been uh, the case, but you can see from these shots just how dirty this thing really was. Now the first thing I wanted to do before I even turned this on was just see if that fan was clogged up given all the dust. You can see there's a lot of fluff and dirt which I'll need to remove um, and just give that a quick wipe over before I actually power on this device for the first time and install an operating system. I also found a loose screw inside which appeared to be one of the hinge screws although that didn't fix the loose hinge issue. I did give the MacBook a quick clean um, before I actually reinstalled macOS 10 Mavericks. I chose this version as it was best suited for the 500GB hard drive that was still in this machine. Going to the Apple section and about, I can see this is a late 2011 model, although I actually purchased it as a late 2012 model. The battery has almost 1200 charge cycles on it, so that definitely needs to be replaced. In terms of parts that I'll be using, I've got a replacement battery from iFixit, a bottom case, a top lid, and front panel glass. I've got an upper case, a new 500 gig SSD, as well as a new clutch cover, which is the little piece of plastic that goes between the screen and hinges. Okay, so I'm gonna start the repair off with the screen assembly. Now I could have just bought a whole replacement display assembly, which would contain the lid, the front glass and the LCD. However, the LCD in this MacBook worked fine, so I actually just wanted to replace the back lid. I also ordered a replacement front glass panel in case I cracked the old one removing it. The glass panel is actually recessed into the screen and the slightest pressure cracks the glass, so of course it shattered into a million pieces. If you've done an iPad repair, you'll know sort of what this is like. But with about 15 minutes of heating and prying, the glass finally came free from the frame and I could remove it in one giant big piece. I'll also need to make sure to remove the adhesive so I can see those screw holes later on. Of course, I tested the screen just to make sure it was still working and I didn't damage it in any way removing the glass. With that done, I can flip the MacBook over and remove the battery which was only held in by one screw as the other tab for the battery had already snapped off. Now Apple used tri-wing screws for the battery, but luckily I had this strange bit in my iFixit toolkit. Next to go is this stock gross 500 gig 5400 RPM hard drive which will later be replaced with an SSD. It's time to move across to removing the logic board from the device, so I can start by removing all of the flex cables that are connecting to the board. There's quite a lot of these and it's important to remove them so you don't damage the connector if you accidentally leave one in place. It's also very important to be careful around the LCD cable as that is very fragile and easy to damage. With those removed, I can remove all of the screws holding in both the logic board and fan assembly. With those screws removed, making sure to remove the two for the MagSafe charger, I can begin by lifting up the logic board and putting it at an angle. The reason for this is I'll need to disconnect the microphone from the underneath side of the logic board. At this point, you may also need to disconnect the speaker as the cable for the microphone goes underneath the speaker. Derouting all of those cables allows you to take out the logic board from the MacBook Pro. With the board removed, we can take a closer look at it and you can see just like the rest of the computer, it's covered in dust and really needs a good clean. Putting that aside though, I'm gonna move across to the LCD assembly and remove that from the MacBook Pro. 
I'll need to remove the screws for the hinges and disconnect the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth card, as well as remove this speaker from the laptop itself. Whilst removing this, I'll need to deroute some of the cables and unscrew some of these grounding clips that connect to various parts of the laptop's chassis. With the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth card removed, I can finally access the three screws for the LCD hinge. With those removed on both sides, I can lift and remove the old LCD screen. And then I can go ahead and remove the clutch cover, which is just a piece of plastic covering up the hinges. You can see here, this is the reason for the sloppy display. Both the left and right hinges are completely loose as the screws have loosened over years of use and abuse. If you were just trying to fix this, you could just tighten these screws and get away with using the MacBook again. However, I'm changing the back housing, so I'm going to need to remove these to transfer them across to the new LCD lid. Removing the three screws, they come right off. Next, I can move across to the antenna, which is on the display. It's connected with some cables, which I'll need to deroute later on. Next to come out is this LCD screen panel, which has a total of six screws. Now the connector itself is right down at the bottom of the screen and you've sort of got to feed the LCD wire into the lid a little bit further. Once you've slid the LCD out enough, you can disconnect the cable carefully and you can remove the LCD panel. Now I have a little bit more access to remove the LCD cable connector as well as access to the webcam cable. So to remove that, I'll need to disconnect the webcam and just remove it. It's only held in by adhesive so it comes out quite easily and then I can remove its cable um, and retaining screw and feed them out the bottom of the display. Now while I was this deep inside the MacBook, I thought it was a good time to try out a custom mod. So I'm going to try and do a custom colored Apple logo on this MacBook Pro. So to attempt this, I'll need to remove the plastic filter that goes behind the Apple logo and then apply some heat to around the sides of the logo and this will soften the adhesive and pressing the logo through removes the entire Apple logo as one piece. However, the only issue is it's a solid color. Well, it's not actually, and with a little bit of nail polish remover, which contains a lot of acetone, I can apply it to the back of the logo. I can allow it to sit for one to two minutes, then come in with my fingernail and just start scraping away at the coloring of the logo. This took probably 15 to 20 minutes and the end result looked quite nice. However, I snapped the apple leaf off of the top when I was drawing the logo. So make sure to be very careful as it is extremely thin and fragile. As this was the logo from the old lid, I'll need to transfer it across to the new lid by first removing the new Apple logo and inserting my custom one. Now a transparent logo wouldn't look very good as the back of the LCD is just white. So I used some cellophane and inserted it at the back of the logo before reattaching the filter. Now I chose the color purple as that's my favorite color and I wanted a purple custom Apple logo. With that all set and ready to go, I can install all of the original accessories and pieces that go into the LCD screen assembly. Starting with the webcam cable, I'll need to feed that back into place, screwing its retention screw in and feeding it up the side and top of the screen assembly. Once that's ready to go, I can reinstall the webcam and stick it back into place. And now it's time to reinstall the little cable that connects between the LCD panel and logic board of the laptop. So that means I can connect up the LCD panel, being careful yet again not to damage any of the pins or connector, making sure to put the retention bracket into place. Once that's all set and ready to go, I can slide the LCD back into the frame itself, making sure the cable isn't obstructed by any uh, plastic or pieces, and then I can install the antenna back into the screen lid. You can also see that this clutch cover off of the old LCD assembly is cracked and all scratched and beaten up. So I've also got a new one of those to go on after I installed the screen hinges. Now I'll need to just screw these into place. I found it easiest to install the back screw first as it sort of lines everything up. Now it's very important not to over tighten these screws or you could snap one off. 
Even though this happened, I was lucky enough that when I went to sort of just sit the head of the screw over what remained of it inside of the hinge assembly, I could actually turn it and it would have enough grip that it actually fully unscrewed. So I got very lucky with this and I actually just found a screw to replace it with. With the hinges ready to go, I can install the new clutch cover back into place and reinstall the six screws that connect around the sides of the LCD panel. Coming back to the other half of the laptop, I can remove the optical drive by removing the three screws holding it in place. Next, I derouted the speaker wire and removed the right side speaker using a spudger and a pry tool from my Protec toolkit. With those pieces removed, it's time to move across to the microphone, which came out quite easily with just a little bit of a pry. Next to come out is this little bracket with two screws. After that, I can move across to the trackpad and a couple of screws later, that thing falls right out of the old top case. And that is everything we need to take out of the old upper case. So I've actually got a brand new one to go on this MacBook Pro. I purchased this off of eBay for around $75 and included with it was also a bottom for the MacBook Pro, but that was used. This is apparently an Apple official part, which is also super neat. Continuing with my purple theme, I'm going to insert this piece of cellophane above the backlight layer of the keyboard. I had a few people say that this could affect with the cooling of the laptop. However, you can see there's just a giant piece of plastic which covers the back of the keyboard. So this shouldn't affect the cooling in any way. Okay, so it's time to reinstall the trackpad. This is the used one from the old upper case. Luckily, I didn't have to replace this as this one works fine and isn't cracked or damaged in any way. I can install the microphone and the speaker back into the top case making sure to remove the adhesive and reinstall the wire for it in its correct position as it properly adheres to the back of the case. Next, I can install the middle bracket piece which uh, helps support the DVD drive and logic board. Speaking of the DVD drive, that's to go in next with its three screws. Before we go any further, I'll need to attach the LCD panel back into the laptop itself. However, I was having an issue where it wasn't lining up correctly and there appeared to be a gap between the two. As it turns out, I installed the hinges on the wrong side. Flipping those around, it now actually fits inside the laptop correctly and lines up with the screw holes. So I can install the three screws on both sides of these hinges and the LCD assembly is screwed back to the frame. There is also a number of small components like these cable rerouters and standoffs that will need to be screwed in next. It's important to use the right screws as you don't want to damage any of the frame or any other components by inserting the wrong screw into the wrong hole. Now, whilst I was doing this, I could have opted to replace the optical drive with another hard drive, although I found that the 500 gigabyte SSD should be adequate for what this computer will be used for. I'll need to connect the three antenna cables coming from the LCD assembly, as well as the one coming from the frame to the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth card. It's also important to route the cables correctly, so when you install the back panel, everything sits flush and screws back together nicely. With that prepped, I can install the speaker back into the laptop itself, making sure not to clip any cables while screwing it back together. Now I can move back across to the front LCD glass and remove the camera alignment bracket to transfer across to the new panel. Now the reason I left all of this to last is I wanted to make sure the laptop was 100% working before I sealed up the glass panel to the new screen assembly. The reason for this was, as you saw at the beginning of the video, it will shatter if I try and remove it. I also took extra care to make sure no dust was left underneath in between the glass and LCD. With that ready to go, I can move across to the logic board before I install it and give it a good clean and a dust over. Of course, this wouldn't be a restoration if I was to leave the old thermal paste. So I wiped that off, which was hard and crusty, and then I applied some new thermal paste to the CPU. As you can see, I spread it out with a spudger. I'm not sure if that's the correct way of doing it, although I just thought that if it was spread out, it would conduct heat better. 
Tightening up the screws gradually, everything has been installed back into place. I can then attach the microphone cable and put the logic board back into the new uppercase assembly. Now this takes a little bit to align as you need to make sure that the flex cables for various components of the MacBook don't get caught underneath the logic board when you install it. Once it's sitting into place, I then connected all of the connections and flex cables going to various components throughout the MacBook. I could then connect the new keyboard and backlight with that custom purple color. And as you can see, everything is now starting to look like a MacBook again. I can reinstall the fan assembly and begin installing all of the screws holding in the MagSafe connector and logic board. After all of those screws have finally been installed, I can remove this part number from the upper case before installing my new iFixit battery and screwing it in with two tri-wing screws. I can then install the brand new 500 gig solid state drive into the MacBook, connecting up its SATA cable and connecting it down into place and securing it with a bracket and two screws. After that's complete, I can remove any plastic coatings that are on top of any of the new components we've just installed. I can reattach the bottom panel back onto the MacBook, and this completes the restoration. So this is it, a $100 trashed MacBook Pro brought back to brand new condition and even had a custom purple backlit keyboard and Apple logo installed. Taking a look at the specs, this late 2011 MacBook Pro features a 2.4 gigahertz Intel Core i5 processor, four gigs of RAM and a 500 gig SSD. I am looking to upgrade the RAM in the future, but for now, this is looking spectacular and is performing adequately running macOS 10.9.5. And cosmetically, this thing looks brand new. Certainly a lot better than it did at the beginning of this video. And on that note, this has been a Hugh Jeffries video. If you like what you saw, hit that subscribe button and consider checking out the restoration playlist for more videos just like this one. Also, make sure to follow me on my social media for behind the scenes and get a look at some nice photos of this newly restored MacBook Pro, link for which is down in the description. That's all for this video, and I'll catch you guys next time.